Okay. Start today's lecture. So today, uh, there's no content. There's no slides. I shouldn't say no content, but there's no new material being introduced. Today is all about demos and helping you, the user, the uh, the student. So I want to focus on two main things. Homework five. I want to go through this document and see if there are any last minute questions. Anything maybe I missed in lecture or just wasn't clear in lecture. I want to go through all the objectives and just make sure everybody knows what they're doing on homework five. Because I think we're ready to move on from homework five. And then uh, after that, I want to talk about the project. I want to go through some questions, common questions that I've been getting. I want to talk about the reports. I want to talk about deploying on the server. And I want to do a demo of using this server. And is my mic kind of bad? Maybe it might just be you, Muffin Man. Can anyone confirm or deny? I didn't change anything with my setup. Uh, but I want to go through all this and just make sure everybody knows what's up with the project. You thought so too? Oh, no. Hmm. That's unfortunate. I didn't change anything with my settings. So today's lecture is more interactive than most in that whatever... So this is all about uh, helping you, channel, wherever you're specifically not understanding, that's what I want to know. Wherever you're specifically not understanding, that's what I want to know. Wherever yeah, that is, that is kind of crappy. Am I just clipping? Maybe if I turn the volume down. Is that any better? Is that any better? Yeah, a little bit, right? I think that sounds a little bit better. I think I, I had the volume up too high. I think I'm just louder this morning and I started clipping. Started uh, maxing out. Uh, if it's too much of an issue, it sounds like you can still hear me and understand me. It's just crappier quality, which sucks. But uh, but I'm going to keep going through. I'll watch for comments as we go. See if we can adjust. But with that, let's... Start with homework five. Any homework five questions? I'll just kind of run through the, the objectives again. And if you have questions, ask, please. Uh, though, as I've been, you know, repeatedly made aware of, the students who are struggling with the homework or the project, for that matter, are the ones who are not hearing my voice anyway. <laughs> they don't watch lectures. I've had... I'm. Uh, just, I don't know, I don't want to rant about it to the people who it doesn't, whom it doesn't apply to. But I, I've been getting a lot of questions that are effectively, I don't watch lecture or pay attention to this course at all, but I want you to personally answer my question for me. It's like, I, I, I'm just, I'm so sick of it. I'm so done with that. Just watch lecture. But anyone hearing my voice is, you know, exactly the people who don't have to hear that. So, um... But what, I'll say one more thing about it. When a, an entire team doesn't watch lectures, when I get the question of, when I get teams saying, we're getting ready for the deadline tomorrow, which, by the way, in case you missed yesterday's lecture and haven't watched the video, uh, where even are we? Uh, the checkpoint is, I'll let you go till next Wednesday without penalty instead of Friday, instead of today. So anybody skipping lecture to rush to get the checkpoint in, you haven't watched lecture since Wednesday. Zero people on that team have watched lecture since Wednesday. I have no sympathy. All right, so anyway, let's go through this. And if you have any questions, stop me along the way and let me know. So the first visit, Cookie, for that, can we approach that however works best for us? Yeah, so the message, you can do whatever works for you. So for the first cookie message, when the user first visits your page, you're going to display some message that welcomes them to the site. Uh, and you're, on the response, you're going to set a cookie that just marks them as visiting the page. And then when they visit the page, any time except their first time, display a different message. So the mechanics are up to you. If you want to render this client side, that's fine. And then use Ajax requests. That's fine. If you want to use, uh, if you want to render these server side 
and splice the string into the you know into the response the body of the response somehow that's fine uh, if you want to display different messages here like once you get objective four once you get objective four that welcome message is going to be like you're logged in as username if you want to have these just one message and say welcome welcome username welcome back username that's fine too uh, I'm allowing a lot of excuse me I'm allowing a lot of flexibility uh, on this and I'll let the TAs know uh, when it comes time to grade that whatever message oh, they already know actually I don't have to tell them uh, that uh, whatever message is acceptable <coughs> they know because this comes up every homework assignment what I give is an example but I always have these notes that you can personalize things so it's however you want to do it uh, it's whatever you want to say and however you want it to do it it doesn't even have to be an H1 if you want to display it differently but it should be obvious like don't make the TA really look for it don't put it in you know point six font down at the bottom of the page next to a copyright notice or something. You know, make sure the TA isn't going to miss it during grading. To answer your question, 23 bears, do you have a specific plan in mind? <laughs> yeah, point oh 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 two font. Well, technically it was there. Or put it as a hidden field. Well, it was on the page. You just couldn't see it. Or or probably the worst thing that would actually be acceptable that I, on a regrade request I'd have to take is put it in the title. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome back. I'd be like, well, technically you had it, but geez, you expect the TA to look at the title? Yeah, templating is the expected solution. They have an HTML template on the server side, and then you uh, render the template server side and then send it over. That's the expected, that's the anticipated, um, that's the intended route for this assignment. Uh, if you want to deviate from that, that's fine, as long as it works, as long as we get the functionality. Okay, no questions on objective one. Any more questions on objective one? Objective, if we want to keep the WebSocket upgrade connection for our homework four, how can we set WebSocket frame to change the cookie part in the header? So what web cookies are an HTTP, uh, that's part of HTTP. Uh, with WebSockets, you can't use cookies. You can only access the cookies for, for WebSockets on the handshake. So the handshake starts with an HTTP request. You have the cookies. After that, you can't access the cookies anymore. Nowhere when you parsed web frames or sent web frames did you have any cookies at all. The cookies just don't exist in WebSockets. It's not part of the protocol. Uh, so if you get a WebSocket message and you want to set a cookie, you just can't do that. You just can't do that with WebSockets. Uh, if you have a request that might set a cookie make that an ajax request don't use websockets for that have the user send an ajax request because then on the response you can set a cookie but you can't do that with you just can't do that with websockets i mean you can i shouldn't say can't you can always do anything but you would have to send a websocket frame with a message that says you know something that says set a cookie and then on the client side you would say socket.on that or, well i guess no you wouldn't be able to do that on the homework uh you would say when i receive this message oh yeah it is socket that on what am i thinking socket that on message and when you receive a message of that particular type then in javascript on the client side set the cookie it's dangerous you can't do that for anything like authentication but um but technically you could have some hacky workaround for that See, you told fish. So, uh, but you can't send cookies over WebSockets. You can come up with some other solution, but... Is there a specific use case for that that you're talking about, too? What are you trying to do? How can we send WebSocket frame to change the cookie part in the header? Hey, what are you trying to do with that? Why are you trying to do that with WebSockets? Maybe I can help you out a little more. Uh, next, the authentication, the, the big twofer, which is a little easier than I... For some reason, I was thinking this was going to be a lot harder where it should be half the assignment. Uh, it turns out this isn't too difficult, especially since we've done the form stuff and the form parsing. But put two forms on your page, a registration form and a login form. Each of them take a username and password. When they register, you're going to securely store their password in a database with by using salting and hashing. For that, we're offloading a lot of the work to bcrypt. 
In Wednesday's lecture, we saw that bcrypt is like three lines of code to handle everything that you need in, uh, in a variety of languages. Uh, so you're going to store a salted hash of that password and the username associated with that password. bcrypt is going to save the day here and make your life pretty easy in terms of storing the, the, the uh, passwords, uh, insulting and hashing them. And then whenever somebody wants to log in, whenever the login form is submitted, you're going to take that, that username, look it up in the database, get their salt and their hash, apply the salt to the hash, hash it, or apply the salt to the password, hash it, check if it matches the stored hash. If it does, send them some message indicating that they've logged in. And if it doesn't, send them some message saying that they didn't log in. Uh, if you do Objective 4, this can say, hey, username, you logged in, or welcome username, or whatever, you know. Something indicating that they've successfully logged in. So the TA can verify that your server knows that this user correctly authenticated. And some message saying that, hey, to let the TA know, hey, the server did not, and the user, the server did not authenticate you. You're trying to, to keep the WebSocket chat function after set the cookie to client and keep the client as authenticated later on. So are you talking about the authentication cookie? If you're talking about the authentication cookie and you want to say, uh, you want to have chat open with a WebSocket connection before they log in so they can be chatting. And then you have an Ajax login request where the user can submit their username and password and log in without having to refresh the page keep that same websocket connection and and uh but have it then authenticated and then have their chat messages be from that particular username uh that's going to be tricky to to do and i don't think there's really a a, a good way to do that there are bad ways there are insecure ways to do that um, but the best way is to just reestablish the WebSocket connection after login. You could even, if you're really not wanting the page to reload, what you can do is sever the WebSocket connection and then reconnect. And then on the handshake, you see the token in the cookie and then authenticate that WebSocket. Yeah, exactly. Start the WebSocket, either start the WebSocket connection after they authenticate or uh, reestablish a new WebSocket connection, or, uh, what was I just thinking? Or on the page load, like don't, your uh, login form, just don't do this with an AJAX request. Do it with a regular form submission, which will trigger page reload, and that'll reestablish a new WebSocket connection. Which would probably be the, the best way to do it, because then you have cookies on all of the content that's loading. So cool. Uh, so the big thing here is the security, making sure you're storing those passwords in in, uh, in a secure way. Without that, this is a, a homework three. Um, this is like objective one and two on homework three. Uh, we're way beyond that, just handling form submissions. Uh, the big thing is storing these passwords securely and storing uh, storing things in a persistent database, right? Did I even, ooh, I didn't put that in the, oh yeah, I did, in a persistent database. Any questions on the authentication part? Uh, those messages can be on whatever loads after they submit that page. So after they submit the page, Verify that the page, this isn't necessarily the home page, it's whatever page loads on the form submission. We get on objective 2, 3.
Right, and then authentication tokens. Now, instead of just displaying something that says you logged in or login failed, now you're going to set a token in a cookie that verifies this user. This, uh, this token should have enough entropy. Ooh, I didn't even put that in the testing procedure. That one I definitely didn't. I mean, I didn't put any security warnings here, so I guess this, that one's going to have to slide. Uh, this token should have enough entropy that it can't be guessed, you know, anything above 80 bits of entropy. Since I didn't put that in the homework, you know, if you have weak tokens, it's not going to be a zero on the objective. Uh, so, uh, since I wouldn't, wouldn't be super fair, I still would argue that it's fair, but I don't know. How many students do I want to give zeros to on objective four? Because like half the class is going to have weak tokens since I didn't remind you 18,000 times. All I did was say it in lecture and in the slides. God forbid somebody pay attention to those. Anyway, I, I, I don't want to be bitter. Uh, so set that token in a cookie. And then whenever you see a request with that token, you're going to treat them as that user associated with that token. So whenever a user logs in, go, go to your database and store, ideally in a separate table. This would be a separate table than your... Uh, uh, your uh, username and passwords or a separate collection if you're using MongoDB and uh, store the username associated with that token and then when you get a request with that token you're gonna look up the username associated with that token and then verify that you know who this user is after a page reload so when they log in refresh the page and they should stay logged in they should be able to oh, I was about to say close the browser uh, closing the browser will probably reset your cookie uh, because I didn't say make sure you put a an expiration date on these cookies. Uh, so there will be session tokens if you just set the cookie without any directives. So set the, the cookie, reload the page. You should be able to open a new tab also, and you'll see that username. You'll still be authenticated on that new tab. And just display some message, just verifying proof of concept. Hey, I know who you are. And then that's where you would start building the rest of your app, your user-specific features. You know who this user is. At that point, you can go to the database and pull up specific content for that user. You can run algorithms to, to give recommendations for that specific user based on their history at, on your site. Uh, this is where you do all kinds of stuff like that. Let them edit their profile, but not other profiles. Let them edit their posts, but not other people's posts. All that good stuff. Uh, this would be our proof of concept at that point. You have a request, and you know based on the token that that is this particular user. And the bonus objective on the server, I won't spend much time on the bonus. Uh, if you're doing the bonus, presumably you know what, what's up. You know what you're doing anyway. Um, but at least these criteria, including this one criteria of your own choosing, uh, let the user know what those criteria are. This is pretty important because it's, that's how the TA is going to know you did the bonus and that you want it graded. And, um, and of course, it's usability, letting the user know. But uh, verify these criteria server-side. They have to be checked server-side. And make sure that as somebody's registering, that their password meets all these criteria. This, so none of this has changed. I guess tokens. I didn't wait on tokens. Any questions on any of this? After objective four, the user accounts will stay logged in, but in objective three, we need to re-log in. So when we, when the user try to re-log in, my homepage will show the user is already logged in. Can't log in again. Is, is that part of the testing procedure that I put in here? Register... Put an incorrect password. Submit again with the correct username and password. Verify that it's logged in. Server. Restart the server with restart. Oh, yeah, I see.
I want to make sure there are no, absolutely no questions about this. This is my, by the way, just so you know what I'm doing. When I do get questions inevitably about homework five, where they're like, I don't even know where to begin. I don't know anything that's going on. What, do, what is this document asking? I'm going to say, um, why didn't you ask this in lecture on Friday? Why didn't you post that in the chat? And then they'll say something to the effect of, I don't watch lectures. Lectures are for scrubs. And I'll be like, well, so are A's. Get out of here. That's the interaction I plan on having with the last students next week. So now's the time if you're a legit, legitimately paying attention to the course and you're here watching lecture live like you really should be. I mean, I get that some students have to watch the VODs because it's like 2 in the morning. And for that, I'll have sympathy. Got anyone in EST time zone? You should be here right now asking your questions. Are there any last questions on homework five? Does everybody understand what they they need to do? And by the way, that doesn't apply to like, I understand what I have to do and I'm having trouble actually doing it. Those questions are still legitimate. I, I don't want to scare anyone away from coming to office hours for help when you need it. Got it? Cool. I just don't want anyone coming to office hours going, wait, how does authentication work again? Because I'm just going to send them to lecture and be like, watch the vibes. So what's what's an authentication token? I'm not sure what this means. And you only gave us a few sentences here. Sure, but I gave you a whole lecture. And talked about it for 50 friggin' minutes. What's a cookie? All right, time to move on. <laughs> uh, cookie is a, a delicious, buttery, salty snack. <coughs> All right, project time. Does anybody, before we, I just start going into things, does anybody, does a cookie have to be chocolate chip or sugar? Yeah, chocolate chip is preferred. Uh, before we get into this, let me pause for a bit and say, are there any open questions about the project? Is there anything, anybody's, um, any open questions right now? I'll take a, a few sips of tea, wait for questions. Yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, I will show it exactly in Chrome. It's the same thing in Opera, but I'll, since you asked for Chrome explicitly, I'll, I'll show you in Chrome. So you go to Inspect, Application, Cookies, and all your cookies are going to be here. If I go to Google.com, Google's going to set a ton of cookies. Oh, only three? That seems odd. Uh, they're going to set cookies. You can right-click right here and go clear. Boop, no cookies. Or you can edit the cookie. Say you have your authentication token here in a cookie. You can just be like, now it's something different. Refresh the page and make sure that you get something, something different. Looks like Google should, just to verify, Google should notice that that's an invalid cookie and give me a new token. And they, in fact, do. So you can do that to test your stuff. When's the due date? And I hope you're not actually asking that. I hope that's that one's a troll too, but you know, just in case. Homework five is next Friday. Uh you I did extend it to Wednesday. Next Wednesday you can just because this checkpoint it really snuck up on me, so I'm going to give you all the benefit of the doubt and say, well, it might have snuck up on a lot of you as well. Uh when it was supposed to be today. Like, holy crap, that came fast. Um, and partly because I took so long on the project, the checkpoint one feedback, I think that's why it felt like that came up so fast because I, I took way, way longer than I wanted to on the first checkpoint. So in fairness, for those two reasons, pushing this back till next Wednesday. So you have a few more days to work out your checkpoint. Plus that gives you some time to get your deployments ready. Ideally, you'll have your deployments ready by this, uh, by this checkpoint submission. By this last chance to submit the checkpoint without penalty anyway. You can still submit a checkpoint after that, but you won't get the credit for uh, for the checkpoint incentive. Uh, but if you still want a round of feedback and you just weren't ready until Friday, you know, whatever, submit it Friday. I'll still give you feedback before the deadline. Um, but this this should, this should read due date, actually. Uh, this is when the project is actually due, last day of classes. So we're not coming going into finals week. 
The project video is technically your final exam, uh, so that'll be due during finals week. Uh, by Wednesday, ideally you'll have your project deployed, especially if you're looking to get your project graded at this point. If you think your project is in a state where it's done, and ideally you're trying to finish the project right here and not have to worry about it later in the semester, uh, you definitely have to have that deployment. And if that deadline was Friday, it's just, I mean, it is enough time, but kind of isn't. But anyway, I'll give you more time to figure out the deployment. Plushing project went well and it works. What uh, what team what team number are you? Do you want it to be shown in lecture? That would be a good example. If you don't mind, um, doxing yourself a little bit. If you do mind, then just don't respond. But eighteen, I want to type in the whole. I know you pasted it there, but I want to type in the full URL just to show this to people. Let me read Dorian's first. I you on Monday, then I forgot to include the security issues on my homework for and I email. Oh, come on. That's not a lecture question. Uh, I'll get to the email. I'm not I'm not responding super quick. There are, you know, I have a little bit of a backlog of re grade requests in my emails, which honestly I shouldn't even address at all. It should just, your grade should be your grade. But I am, I'll at least respond to you and uh, for any regrade requests. So when you have your site deployed, You'll be able to go to that URL I gave in the email, dcsl.buffalo.edu. Yeah, tic-tac-toe with friends. Oh, yeah, I said in your feedback. I was excited to play tic-tac-toe. So let me register. Let's actually use this. I'll register as Jesse. Uh, fake. Email.com. Oh, and it logs me in. Uh, how do I how do I tic tac toe you? WebSockets don't work. I, I feel like there's no tic tac toe to play. Oh no, I was, I was hoping we could play a game during lecture. Uh, but when your site is deployed, go to that URL. You do have to be connected to the UB network. Or oh, you go to that URL, your app should be there. Multiple people need to be logged in. Oops. Oops. Oh, you weren't logged in. That's why. Yeah, I want to play you. I'll take the corner. This doesn't work with WebSockets, right? This Does this part work? Oh, it's... It's, uh... Single player. I won! Yeah, go be <laughs> WebSockets. Yeah, I heard you that WebSockets don't work. I just wasn't 100% if uh, the game itself used WebSockets. I guess it would all but have to. Awesome. So, check out the DM page, though. Where is the DM page? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's just not... Yeah. And then once I submit it, triggered a refresh. And we got to see it. Awesome. I'm happy. I, I'm excited to get to the point. Project Checkpoint 1 was kind of a downer because I couldn't really see the apps. Most of y'all were just laying the foundation and some infrastructure. And you didn't get to the point where you actually built the theming of your app. Like, I couldn't tell. Uh, this one I could, but most of them I couldn't tell. Like, we're building a game or we're building a, a social media site. So I'm excited to see them start to come together. For Checkpoint 2, hopefully I'll get to see all the theming and what you're actually building. Instead of just, we built authentication with DMs. Of course, some teams will probably just build authentication with DMs and uh, the ability to change your profile picture and not actually build a site, but... You know, it is what it is. Not everyone's going to take it seriously. Um, edit debug report. Well, because you're not using sockets here. Once this is using sockets, that won't be a bug anymore. Yeah. 
Yeah, image sharing. I mean, those sites, the site I just described can still get full credit. It just bums me out a little because I like seeing cool things that students build. Like, that's what we're all here for, right, is to be able to build really cool software and exciting web apps. Uh, so, you know, you can still get loose, cut loose with your grade if there's no theming and no excitement in it. But it's just, it's just a downer. And it makes it a late, much less exciting to grade. It drains my energy grading those projects. But if that's what you're doing, that's what you're here for, is just to get your grade and not build cool shit, you know what, I ain't going to blame you for that. Uh, I'm just saying it's less exciting for me. Like, I've seen a thousand sites where it's just authentication and, you know, just really boring. Um, can you try updating your profile pic? I don't know if I have a... You know, I probably have the sample images. Oh, uh, yeah, here's an elephant. Hey, I'm an elephant. <laughs> all right all right let's uh let's get back on track i, I don't uh i think we want, look at all the features that's look looking good by the way looking fantastic once you get web sockets i think that's everything if i'm not missing some all right so let's talk about a couple of things here there are a few things that i want to make sure i get through why is there a dash here who did that it was probably me it was definitely me um so the reports, I added a few lists here. Uh, I'm getting a lot of common questions, and I, it's long overdue that I compile these lists. Uh, here's a list of all the reports that you do not, or all the libraries that you do not need to write reports for. So if you have a question, you're like, I don't know if we need a report for this or not, check this list. If it's not on this list, then you need a report for it. Or if it's not on this list, ask me. And I can, uh, I'll either add it to this list or I'll add it to this list. The second list, uh, so anything not on this list, you have to write a report for. Uh, this list will grow. This is dynamic. And I want it to grow today, right now. If you have a question about any library that's not on either of these lists, ask me right now and I'll add it to one of these two lists. So anything not on this list, you have to make a, you have to write a library for or you have to write a report for. Uh, and some of the common questions, some of the things where I get questions, even though it's not on this list, it's still a little ambiguous. It's like, wait, do we need a report for front-end templates? I'm adding to this list where it's like, yes, you do explicitly need a report for this. Your front-end templates, your front-end frameworks, aside from jQuery and styling-only libraries like Bootstrap, but if your front-end framework is doing a lot of work for you, if it's doing like templating and it's uh, the library itself is communicating with the server, then you're going to need a report for that. Uh, socket so so Server-side Socket.io, yes, you need a report. Client-side Socket.io, no, you don't need a report. Uh, so any questions, let me try to get this all on screen since I see only one of you is in the doc. Let me accommodate you. Get this all on screen so you can read the list. Are there any questions right now? about a library where you're not sure if you need a report or not. And this will be the definitive list. Anytime I get a question like office hours or email or something, I'm going to update this list because if you have a question about it, it's probably not clear and I'm going to add it to the list because other people probably have that question too. Yeah, the exciting stuff takes more time and some of us don't really have that time. I, I mean, I get that. It, it doesn't make it any... It doesn't really help when I'm grading because, yeah, I get it, but it still sucks to grade a bunch of generic projects that all do the same exact thing. So it doesn't help my situation, but yeah, I, I mean, I get it. I get it. It's more That's more of a comment. Like, when I first started this job, I thought that's what a lot of it would be, is I'm showing you how to do cool stuff, and then you go off and do cool stuff. Like, that's what I thought being a computer science professor was going to be. And that's just not what it is. It's more of just a slog, like, here's some content, and then students barely surviving the semester, just barely complete the things that I require them to do, and then they move on. I never really get to, never really get that excitement to a great degree anyway. A uh, small portion of each class is going to, a small portion of the students are always going to build some really cool stuff. That's kind of what keeps me going. Um, but a lot of it's just, I don't know, academic. 
Make your... Ban, ban, ban. Those of you watching on YouTube, we just got spammed with a by viewers bot. Muffin Man does want to be famous. Oh, sorry, I banned them all already. <laughs> oh, not this one. Ban. Of uh, yeah, make your Twitch PFP a zoomed in image of your face. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I should update the Twitch one. It's an old picture that, I, that I'm using. I forget what it even is. Yeah, I don't even have a beard in that picture. Django's got this thing called Crispy Forms that basically that basically just formats the form the way Bootstrap does. Do we need a report for this? Called Crispy Forms. If it's formatting only... Ooh, that's a good question. Formatting only, but it's server-side. That I th That I think, yes. Uh, and the reason is because we use, we did HTML templating in the homework assignments. So server side, yeah, you know what that is going to be. But then would bootstrap require a report? I already put bootstrap here. I'm not going to move it. Just the formatting. And it doesn't do any content. If it makes you feel any better, we'll make cool shit when we get in our careers. But will you? I know, look, at, I, and, and I'm going to be careful the way I word this. I know you're very busy right now. I know you're swamped with assignments and you're being crushed by a lot of things. Right now might be the time when you have the most free time. Out there in industry, it's common that you work. 50 60 hour weeks in this career if you're lucky you get a place where you can clock out eight hours a day and do your 40 hours a week but it's not like you leave work filled with energy and excited to work on your own side projects and depending on where you work you're probably not building cool stuff at work this is where this is how it hits me where it hits me the hardest because when i was a student that was the last not i shouldn't say the last because in this job of course i get summers off and i can I can play around all summer, so I'm in a good spot. But if I went into industry, being a student was probably the last time where I could really work on a project of my own, where I really had the time to do that. I know it doesn't seem like that, but when you take a course like this, where, where it's explicitly, like it's not even a side project, it's you are doing this for credit for a course, and 442 as well. You're doing this project open-ended, you can do whatever you want. Like, that's a huge opportunity that you might not get again. And to see students, so many students just squander it because they're worried about their grade and just want to work on operating systems and algorithms. Uh, I don't know. It's just, just saddening to see you waste that opportunity. Um, but hey, maybe you'll have a career where you will have a lot of free time and can still build cool stuff. But you're probably not building cool stuff at your job. Unless you work at an exciting, cool new startup. If you like, I don't know. That's why it really hits me hard. Because it's like, now, now is your time. Uh, a lot of those cool new startups, you know, the coolest ones, in my opinion, start from college students. Like, that's, that's not an anomaly. That's kind of the normal case, that college students start the big startups. Uh, it's a little different now, I guess, with so much venture capital out there that, you know, you can, you can do that otherwise, but you can get a bunch of capital, but like now is the time because you got to pay yourself. You got to eat right now. You already have your living conditions figured out probably by student loans. Now's the time where you don't have to worry about eating and finding a place to live and getting income, generating income to pay for those things. Django got this thing called crispy. So do I want to put crispy on there? Let me let me look up what it actually is. Forms have never been this. Oh, crispy. I thought that said creepy at first. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is generating all the HTML for you. It's not just doing formatting. That's generating all the HTML for you. HTML template libraries includes Django Crispy. For any library that generates HTML for you. Let's say generates HTML. So yeah, crispy. That's gonna need it because it's writing your form for creating the forms is something we did in lecture. Doing HTML templates that was something we you had to do on the homework assignments. Crispy's doing that for you. It's gonna go on the does need a report list. Flask SQL Alchemy. I think that will. I think that will fall under. No, just the connection libraries. So let me let me look up this one too. Class. If it does all the modeling for you, then you do have to write a report for it. Oh yeah. Report. includes because you had to interact with your database directly on the homework assignments that's something you had to do on the homework that's something you're going to need a report for flash sql alchemy in django modeling or any library that generates your database queries for you. So you don't have to write a uh, report for anything that's handling the TCP connection of your database. Database client libraries, maybe I can specify this uh, client connection libraries. Anything that handles the connection and you say, hey, execute this SQL statement or send this mong this document to my Mongo, that's fine. You don't need reports for that. But once it starts interacting with the queries, when it starts generating the queries for you, and you say, here's, here's my object model, and then when you have an object of that type, you just do like dot .save, and it generates all of the database interactions, the queries, to be able to save that to the database. You can just say, hey, Flask SQL Alchemy, give me, uh, with a function call, with a method call, give me all the objects with this value, with this, you know, location. <clears throat> oh, my. Uh, that's doing a lot for you. That's doing all the database queries for you. Uh, so that's that definitely needs a report. Bootstrap is nothing like the... Uh, that crispy that I just looked at. Bootstrap, you actually have to use Bootstrap yourself. It Bootstrap does a little bit of the JavaScript for you, but it doesn't generate the HTML for you. You write the HTML and then you add Bootstrap to it to style the HTML. That crispy that you showed me, you're saying, give me a form where the user can choose these options and it generates the HTML for you. That's the difference. Because you're getting too far away from actually building the site at that point you're just using a library i don't care if you can use a library like you you should be able to use a library you should have been able to use a library since 115 i i'm not impressed by that in a 300 level class uh, so if you're using a library to do the work for you i want to report on it so you know what that library is doing and how it's doing it because you have to show me the point of the reports is you got to show me that you could have built that library you could have done that by yourself 
but you used a library because you just didn't feel like it because that's what we do as programmers we let the libraries do the work for us for this course i want to make sure you understand what that library is doing and how it's doing it because if you can do it and you just don't feel like it that's cool i'm fine with that just write a report and let me know about it um, but if it's something that you can't do and you're using the library because you can't develop it I mean, what are you even doing, man? Jingo, also, you don't have to put the forgive me fellow classmates because if, you know, I'll, I'll make these decisions at the project checkpoint. When you submit a project checkpoint, I'm going to be updating this list a lot. So if we get it on the list now, it's going to allow you to get a round of feedback during that checkpoint instead of having that be your last round of feedback and saying, oh, you you know, you need a report for that because, you know, you need a report for that. So Django also has the ability to parse the message using the form object. So, oh, yeah, I, I did add that. You probably said that before I added it. Well, now I'm just sad. My question is, why are you sad, though? Were you trying to take a shortcut and the loophole was just closed? If that's the case, then come on, man. Django channels and Redis. I, I talked about this with a student in office hours. I didn't I forgot to update the list. Um, Redis, no. Django channels, yes. Including how Redis is used. Oh, yeah. Sorry, 23 bears. Yeah, that is sad. It sucks. There, there's one way to do it. My brother actually did it this way, is you work for a startup, the startup goes public, you pocket a bunch of money, and then stop working and just work on side projects. It's He's living the life. So you can do it that way. It's not the easiest way to pull off. All right, I'll, I'll keep uh, answering those questions. I can do it after the lecture. I do want to very quickly go through this with maybe one minute. Uh, so talking about the deployment servers. Deployment servers are, are live. Hopefully everybody in the class knows about this because I sent emails to everybody. So uh, to connect to your server, you're either going to need to connect to UB's VPN. I did that here. What does it? Kill that window. You go to that link. You download Cisco AnyConnect. I'm connected and follow the steps. I'm connected to the VPN. I have my Cisco AnyConnect connected. Uh, so I can access the server directly. If you don't do UB VPN, if you don't do the AnyConnect, uh, for one, you can't go to a site. So here's a student site setup. The one, I think that was during the YouTube portion, right? The, that we saw earlier. Uh, I can't access this. If I disconnect my VPN, I can't access this. So anybody who wants to go to your site, they have to, uh, they have to be connected to UB's network with the UB VPN. To log into your server itself, you either need the VPN. So I can SSH Hartloff at CSE. 312-00, our development one for myself and the TAs, uh, dcsl.buffalo.edu, and I can connect here, and I can connect to this, the server, and I have this server. I actually have, oops, sudo docker ps. I installed docker on here. I don't have anything running right now. And I also installed Nginx. Uh, ooh, are you going to... Does it make sense to start Nginx? No, you're just going to run your app and map it to port 80. Um, I set up Nginx on here as well. So if I go to this site... Uh, 
I see my default Nginx page because I installed Nginx and I didn't really do anything with it. I was playing with uh, security, seeing if we get HTTPS on these servers. We can, but it, I decided it's not really worth it for the to have you all do it. Uh, so I can log on to this server. If I'm not if I'm not connected to the VPN, say you don't. For whatever reason, you don't want to do the VPN. I don't know what your reason would be. But if I'm disconnected, so I'm no longer connected to the VPN, this just doesn't respond. If you get this just hanging, you know what you did. You didn't connect to the VPN. But if for whatever reason you don't want to do the VPN, you can SSH. Actually, I already I have the command in here. Let me just up it. Uh, so you can SSH into Carol's, and then from Carol's, you can SSH into your machine. Carol's is on the UB network, and Carol's accepts outside connections. So if you do it that way, I got the, to the same place. I got to the server. It's just through Carol's instead of through the VPN. Uh, and then at that point, you want to install Docker. Google's your friend on this one. Uh, it, they are Ubuntu machines. Ubuntu install Docker. And this isn't, you know, it's not just a one-line process. It's not apt get install Docker. There's a decent amount that you have to do. So follow this procedure. Install Docker. Some of this isn't required. I think it gets into, yeah, working with Docker images. You already know how to work with Docker images. You don't have to do that. Using the Docker command, you know how to do that. Uh, but installing these first few few steps. Oh, and that's optional. So I guess just step one. Not too much. Installing Docker. Boop, 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 boop. Follow that. This is the DigitalOcean tutorial. If you want the official Docker tutorial. Why did the Docker tutorial come up? Is the first hit last time. Yeah, or if you want the Docker tutorial. You got that. They're mostly the same thing. I think a few of the steps are different between the two, but they both work. Install Docker once you have Docker set up. Change your Docker Compose file to map port 80 to your container's port. And then you should be able to see your site when you go to your URL. 